In this video, I want to show you how I made a touch keyboard for my laptop. I have this old laptop for about 15 years, and some keys on the keyboard not working anymore. However, it's available on Chinese stores, but I want to make something new and interesting. First, I remove the keyboard from the laptop. Then I start to tear it down to get access to the circuit inside. I'm using my multimeter to find out how the keys connected to the flat cable. After a few hours, I end up with this schematic. As you can see here, we have 88 keys on the keyboard, but we have only 24 pins on the flat cable. This is called multiplexing. For example, by pressing on D, pin number 8 and pin number 3 short out together. But by pressing on V, pin number 9 and pin number 3 short out together. And so on for other keys. To make a touch keyboard, I want to use IC8229. This IC is a capacitive switch with 8 channel. However, you can use it with 16 channels if you connect it to a microcontroller via I2C. But since I want to use it without microcontroller, so only 8 channels are usable. I connect each output of the IC to an optocoupler, so we have to replace the mechanical keys of the keyboard with optocouplers. According to my experience, it doesn't matter where you connect the collector and emitter. The switching process can be done even if you connect them in reverse. This keyboard has 88 keys, and the IC can drive only 8 channels, so we need 11 IC. By using these capacitors, you can adjust the sensitivity of the touch sensors. If you remove them, the sensitivity will be maximum. By removing this resistor, you can run in only one output at each time. I repeat this circuit 11 times, then I convert it to PCB. I ordered it from PCBWay.com. After 10 days, I received my package. Then I solder the components on the PCB. Unlike the old keyboard, this one needs to a 5V power supply. I found 5V across this capacitor inside, so I soldered two wires to it. Then I connect it to my keyboard. Don't worry about it, because the keyboard just takes a few milliamps. So now it's time to test. As you can see here, it works just fine. To be honest with you, I have some mistakes in the sizing of the PCB. This is why I cannot share it with you for now. It's better to use capacitors here to make the circuit stable. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.